so there's a couple of different ways you can go to outline to analyze the outline of the death mask on to 1840s Illinois man and you do see that he's lost quite a bit of hair and um, there's some distortion in this photograph because it's my own photography and I had to be kind of close because I'm a little bit shorter and just how things are situated in the church history department and so if I just kind of lined up the chin right there you kind of think oh well things are only match right there or something like that But I find it really interesting if you just take this and just enlarge it slightly where the dimensions really are about the same, just basically making the death mask a little bit larger than you are seeing. I've always seen that that part of the head would get would be really flush and then just as things go out right here where the chin hits and the hairline it actually matches really well and so as far as lighting where the camera angles are I mean there are issues you know if, if I had unlimited access to the death mask that would have been really amazing but I didn't someone did let me said I could stand on a bench but it was nailed down so I couldn't but when I do this you do see there's the chin and then there's that you know he did have a receding hairline so when I outlined just his face on here it sort of appears like oh no way his hairline is just much lower he didn't lose his hair but you do see some darkness here that these are hairs. He just has some thinning hair. Um, you see that here. You definitely see that here, that this is, there is no hair right here. And then this is plaster, so it's much more deceiving, but these are a little bit more like scraggly hairs. And this looks like some longer hair. He's really been pushed forward. And then it's just cut. Is what I find interesting is that this thickness, like his hair is cut very blunt, whether that was before he died maybe it was his summer haircut you know kind of thinking of some famous women's paintings of the 1500s where they would just shave their forehead farther back or cut it or it, it was okay to kind of but you see that thickness it looks like his hair is cut very blunt right here and that's thick um that's one thing that i find really interesting is just that thickness of this blunt cut hair that it's kind of strange, it's kind of different. Um, in all the artwork, it looks like his hair is coming forward and he pops it up. So this video is also kind of like the hair and it's, it's a point of um, contention because men think the forward-facing painting is just the most accurate painting of him, but Maudsley's artwork shows a totally different story than this unknown artistic forward-facing. We don't know who the artist is, but we know Maudsley did Maltzley's work. Joseph Smith lost quite a bit of his hair, so there's the story of, there's that outline. I just expanded it a little bit, and I think with distortion, I think if I had my own artwork that was farther away, um, it would be easier to kind of do that overlay. But anyway, that's the outline.